I usually give like a intro for all my guests. Right. And if oh, there's one I, thing we don't need, is when I do that, thing. when yeah. I do that, what like what's the five projects I should mention? Like in your career, you know Chris Wilde from the Duff, the Duff. The Revenant. The Revenant. The Babysitter. The Revenant, not the Leo one. The better one. Yeah, well, The Revenant. Yeah. I like to do the projects with the thes in the title. Yeah. So, The Duff, The Revenant, The Babysitter, The Chris Wilde Show starring Chris Wilde, and I don't know. Hey, Joe, I like your show. I tell everybody that's my shit. And if you got a long ride and you like getting high, maybe go and take another hit. We gonna laugh out loud, that's what it's about. Nobody ain't safe no more. And Joe stands out even in the big crowd, cause the motherfucker six foot four. Hey Joe, it's time to start the show. Up, up, and away we go. Mike Jack, and I like your flow. Everybody, here's Joe. That was such a great theme song. So catchy. Wow, what a toe tapper. That's my guest on episode 10 of the Joe Prano podcast, my favorite guest on all podcasts, Mr. Chris Wilde. Hey, everybody. Welcome to JPP with tonight's guest, me. Chris, I have been... Let me tell you how I got down here. Not that you need an explanation on how I arrived at your place and wanted you to be a guest on my podcast, because that's obvious. You're the most entertaining man in show business. Agreed. But I was just watching the new Norm MacDonald Netflix show. The controversial Norm Macdonald Netflix show because he said who was a victim during <laughs> Roseanne's tweets. Like I understand Louis C.K. had a couple of victims that he you know twiddled his diddle in front of. Yeah, sorry for the language. Yeah, your um, son is in the room. But uh, seven years strong, going on eight in uh, thirty-four days. Thirty-three. Thirty-three. Patrick, Patrick Ewing. Ewing. So, uh, but Roseanne tweeted about a woman. She tweeted about a woman. Yes. There's no victim there. No. Even the woman she tweeted about is not a victim. And even the woman she tweeted about was like, I don't care. This she doesn't not, care. I just did She's not like bother She's like a classy me. lady. Yeah. Whoever she, I can't remember the name of the lady. So I was watching. I've been I've been ingesting all things Norm recently. I listened to him on Howard. See, I've been digesting recently. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I was, Archie I, and Jughead double digest. I was watching the first three episodes of his show. And I was like, Norm is so great. I love Norm. Maybe my favorite comedian of all, of all time. He's really funny. But he's but he's still at his best as the guest on a talk show. Absolutely. And I was sitting there and I go, who is like the norm of podcasts? Uh-oh. And then I was like, I got to go down and Watch do an out. episode with Chris Wilde. Boom. The Norm McDonald of podcasts. I once saw a Blake Griffin comedy night, Comedy by Blake. And Whitney Cummings came out and did time. Blake hosted. He did a set, which was pretty good. Um, who else did a set? Oh, Jim Jeffries crushed. Blake came out and was like, I can carry a team by myself. And the whole crowd was like, <laughs> yeah, yeah, it was comedy. And then it was a period. And we said, bye, Blake. <laughs> uh, comedy by Blake. And so Jim Jeffries came out crushed, called Blake uh, the C-bomb. Um, again, I'm so sorry for the language. Uh <laughs> Because like Blake was quote unquote injured during that time, right? And he didn't even limp. And Jim Jeffries like at least limp, mate. Anyway, and then Norm Macdonald came on and literally creeped the entire room out. Half the audience got up and left and just went into the lobby and drank and danced. Like it was at some nightclub. Yeah. And then John Mulaney had to come up. Next. And he creeped them out how? Just with jokes. Or you just what, you know what? So was he doing the anti comedy thing? He was not telling jokes. He was telling like old gambling stories. But then I went into the green room with Jim afterwards, and met Norm McDonald's mother. So Norm was there with his mom. So maybe he was maybe he was nervous because yeah. his mom was there. But I'll tell you what he wasn't was a comedian telling jokes. Right? Like he there was no jokes. There was no, I mean I it was it was very interesting. I was. Like, and I think Norm's a great comedian, and I think he has moments in each stand-up set that I see where I'm always like, that's amazing, and then the rest is like, uh, it's okay. But everything else he does is brilliant. Like he's Dude, him on roast, Letterman, his, him on Howard. Yeah. He's a great guest. Fantastic. You're absolutely right. But, uh, you know, I did an episode a couple episodes ago about social media and how one tweet can ruin your life and right. the whole James Gunn thing and the Roseanne. And, that's why I mean, I'm off social media. 
I was. I wanted to ask you. You're yeah. not on social media anymore at all. I just have too much to lose. Right. <laughs> you know what I mean. It's, I don't even want to mention my new Kia commercial on your show. Yeah. Because <laughs> I feel like Kia will fire me because I shouldn't mention Kia on your show. Kia. I always ask you because when you go on podcast, the right. greatest guest in podcast history. I like to bring you, the heat. You bring the heat. You push the envelope. Sure. Sometimes you light the envelope on fire. <laughs> sure. Sometimes uh, I lick the envelope. Sometimes the envelope licks me. And I asked you one time, I said, you... Because I've seen you get into it with people on social media, <laughs> yeah. and then like I, 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 I'm inside the head of Chris Wilde. I watch you, and then some girl gets upset. At pale comparison. Yeah, and uh, she tags your agent, and she tags she calls Kia, SAG. and whatever. She calls SAG. <laughs> she calls her Kia And dealer. you're like, you know what? Why, why, why? This is not for me. I don't need this. Right. I disappear. And, but, and w- I could ignore her. Right. Which is probably the smart, rational, mature thing right. to do. But then I just get bored. Yeah. So when I'm bored, I will then just light her on fire. I'm the exact same way. And it's not even that of boredom. I have to have the last word. Totally. Like, literally. I will keep going until you stop. Um, so you're, you've been on and off social media. Right. But I always ask you, and I'm surprised because you do podcasts, mm-hmm. and you go way beyond anything you do on social media. And I said to you, I go, aren't you worried about people finding stuff you say on podcasts? And I just, with the nice thing about doing like your podcast or Eddie F's podcast, no one's listening. Right. That's the beauty of it. No one is listening. Yeah. There's video footage of me saying horrible things. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and no one's downloading these videos. No one's watching these videos. No one's listening to these podcasts. Or they are, but like your usual podcast fan is ingesting so much, you know, that like, what are they going to do? Remember right. when I made a horrible off cal- off colored homophobic rape joke, you know, right. which was a joke. But I also think that's something. Yeah, I had blueprints. Yeah. I had pictures. <laughs> yeah. I had real stories about stuff I did. <laughs> I think that's the other thing with Norm getting in trouble was he got in trouble for a, a print article and then he goes on Howard and he says down syndrome but if you listen to the whole thing, he said you have to be Down syndrome. You have to have Down syndrome, not to feel bad for Me Too, or not to be into the Me Too movement, or something like that. And that should be so Is that much a double more double negative. F- yeah, well, that I don't should be dislike them. That should be so much more offensive. But because he's saying it live, and you can hear him, you're like, oh, context. He's always joking. So a buddy of mine, I found out. Oh, yeah, you're. He lives in uh, the quiet beach community that I live in, and he. I found out, oh, he was a writer on Norm. I was like, oh, cool. What was that like? He goes, oh, I wasn't a writer on Norm. I was just basically like, I handled all his gambling. <laughs> <laughs> like he would just be, he would be in the Norm production office at Warner Brothers or wherever it was for ABC and literally just hundreds of thousands of dollars in cash. And he was like Norm's like middleman for gambling. And, and, and they gave him a writer credit on the show. He hasn't written anything before or after. Right. Um, a Pretty buddy great. of mine, a buddy of mine, guest starred on uh, the Norm, the Norm McDonald show, whatever the hell that was called, Norm, I guess. And um, he was a guest star, and they, they, the call time was 10 a.m. Not particularly late. They go at a 10 a.m. to Warner Brothers, and they just wait for Norm to show up. And Norm shows up without a phone call, or at 4 p.m. and goes, "Hey, I had to take a buddy to the airport." <laughs> <laughs> and that is like, and they're like, "Okay," like literally, like yeah. So like. It's a it's a shock that Norm even has a career when yeah. he's pulling these kind of things on the regular. Those are just two stories I know. You know, the, these are just two things that just happened in the past 48 hours with Down syndrome and, you know, the victims right. of of Louis CK and Roseanne. Again, like I I kind of go to bat for Norm on this where uh, I'm just going to say this there's no victim in the Roseanne tweet. You know, she said something against the woman and said she's half Planet of the Apes half. I don't remember. Right. So all we remember is Planet of the Apes. There's no like. That, I mean, I don't know. There's no victim yeah. there. I mean, the the well, word. If I'm a black person, I'm not. I'm not. That's. I'm not a victim because of that. The victims, the survivors, like uh, the the survivors of Me Too, the survivors of sexual abuse. Like when Har- Harvey Weinstein was jerking off in a plant, did you think you were gonna die? Right. <laughs> did you survive? My buddy went to a party, some Hollywood party, and went to the DJ booth. And like 
was in the DJ booth and then pulled open a door that he thought was like a private restroom, and maybe it was. But what Harvey Weinstein was using it for was to get a double BJ from two different models. Who, I think with him, he got so much sex, he became this horrible sex monster. Right. And he didn't realize, I guess none of the mirrors in his house worked. And he didn't realize he was... Jewish Godzilla, <laughs> you know, <laughs> yeah. but uglier. Yeah, and so like he just was like, uh, I can get any girl. I can get any girl. Yeah. Oy vey. <laughs> you think that like so I'm gonna lose Kia because I said that? Right. I don't think so. <laughs> no, because no one's listening. <laughs> and it doesn't matter. Yeah, I think I think just the higher up you are, the further you can fall. So like if I were is there, to pop, right? Which by at this I, by point, the way, the your career you. is your career is the best career Agreed. because you sure. you live right there in the middle. Sure, you're ne- like when I when I watch and you've been in a bonanza of Netflix movies lately. True, you what, there's, a, what, there's a Netflix trilogy. What's the Netflix movies you've been in recently? You were in the Babysitter, the Babysitter, which was great. I watched horror it simply because comedy. you were in it and didn't know it was a horror movie. Thank Love you. that girl. She's Love great. Samara Weaving. She's great. Uh, Ozzy? She's dating the writer. Of that movie? Yeah, Jimmy. She's dating... He wasn't even the writer of that movie. He was like McGee's buddy. I mean, he worked for McGee. He just put McGee's bets in. <laughs> he was McGee's $100,000 delivery boy. Yeah. So she's dating... and She's dating this guy who's just like a regular bro. Are you and... Anyway. The, are you in the black fella package deal at this point? The guy this, from Vine? King Batch, yes. King Batch. I'm Prince Batch. <laughs> um... So, The Babysitter, horror comedy. When We First Met, romantic comedy. Is that the Adam Devine one? And that's those are available on Netflix now. And then the next I, that one, one was pretty good, too. Yeah. You, you get, were great in that one. Agreed. You get to the device of like the time travel, and then the movie really cooks. Right. You just have to get through the first like, 10, 15 minutes. And then uh, the third in the trilogy uh, is called Rim of the World, a sci-fi family comedy uh, adventure, directed by McG, starring... Uh, I, you can't really say I'm starring in this, but it's me. And again, the Blackburn guy, King Batch. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's like that holy trilogy. We actually did a fourth movie. I'm actually together. not sure that I'm not going to get in trouble for just saying the Black Vine guy, but right. it's fine. I think King Batch knows. Right. He's you could say Vine Red guy. Vine, but yeah. you can't say Black Vine. <laughs> uh, it's a vine of color. Uh, we were in a fourth movie called Airplane Mode, uh, starring all these social media stars. But you'll it'll never see the light of day, sadly, because it stars Logan Paul, and he's just he's weird he's weirdly toxic, right? You know, um, which is sad because that movie I play multiple roles, and it's actually I, who knows I've heard lots of different. Oh, oh there's the timer. That's I your gotta, timer. I got to. We're, uh, we're gonna walk over. We're to gonna your turn kitchen. the Joe Prano podcast into a cooking show. We're walking into your kitchen so you can make pasta for your son. Yes, and I steamed broccoli. Uh, right, donkey. Now, <laughs> oh, what is this? It's raw. It's pink in the middle. F off to the dorms, mate. Slag off. Do you do most of the cooking at home? Risotto. No, 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 no. The wife? The wife does, but she's not here. She couldn't handle our sweet sexual chemistry. <laughs> <laughs> Did she leave because I was coming over? Yeah, like she was just like, I can't be here. You two so clearly need to have sex. <laughs> And she's not giving it to me, and I know you will. So she didn't want to be anywhere near it's it. It's funny because my girlfriend uh, is offended by how I talk about your talent. Well, you do I'm it like, like mid coitus. Yeah, I'm like Chris. I'm like Chris because we did we did a thing together recently. You brought me in on a, on a project that you were working on, right? And we, you were like, "We're going to write this thing together." And you came over to my place. You sat down in front of the computer, yep. and you just started. You turned into the Kermit the Frog meme, where you're just like banging, banging on the keyboard, right? And then every once in a while, I'd throw in a, uh, I'd throw in a joke, and we're done, and it's great. And there's five of my jokes in there, or three of my jokes in there, and f- two of them get cut. And then you, we come over here to record it, right? And you nailed. I mean, think, I think we did four takes. You nailed all but one word. It's like, yeah, I, I'm just impressed. I'm just impressed with your reading ability, how honestly. Many, how many? I've been doing it a long time. How many episodes of that project do we have to do uh, before I become the guy in show business that's made you the most money? Uh, probably. In show business probably. I don't know. Fifteen. Fifteen. Twenty. 
20, it's totally doable. Totally doable. Oh, dude. Oh, I can't wait to rub it in all of your lame friends' face <laughs> how much more profitable my friendship is than their stupid friendship. Although I got to say, Eddie F bringing me on the road a lot lately, which I appreciate. And that, so that number might go to like 20, I mean, 16, 17. Yeah, every every like, road show is going to add. Yeah, exactly. To the pot, to the kitty. I'm pretty sure Eddie brings me on the road now just so he can eat bad and I, and uh, feel okay about it. Can I talk about how you're not drinking beer on the show? Is that too yeah, personal? Yeah, no, you can. Because I got a whole box of Pacificos, and I was like, man, these are going to come in handy when the Italian Stallion comes over here. I know, and I, I would love to. Oh, I I've, love this cheese. I, Wrong I, cheese, Donkey! <laughs> hey, donut. What's round and pink with sprinkles, and Homer loves it. A donut! <laughs> For some reason, donut is in an insult. Uh, a, a, calling someone a donut is an insult in England. All right, sorry. You were saying Eddie if brings you on the road. Just so he can say, like, I can't believe you're going to eat in and out You know how bad it is for you? And then he's like, I'll have a double-double, <laughs> animal style. Animal style he's times like, 10. He's like, oh, I need two animal. chocolate chicks, ice cream. Eddie eats more ice cream than anybody I know. And he's like, oh, you eat so, everything you eat is so gross. Dude, really, you're going to have a donut? Bell's palsy. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's fine. It's What's worth... with you and the Bell's palsy comedians? Everybody I know gets Bell's palsy. Oh. I'm starting to think that I might have a, some sort of bacterial. Oh, that totally makes sense. Lock, you know what would happen? Lachlan would get it, and his face would droop in some sort of handsome way. <laughs> like, <laughs> again, though, I mean, I've said this many times. I'm going to say it again. Uh, Lachlan Patterson is hands- more handsome to men than he is to women. Yes, you have said that many times. Like, my wife is not attracted to him. I really believe her. Yeah. And it's not because she has a type. My girlfriend says the same thing. They're fools. He's gorgeous. I know, I know. What's wrong with these women? I don't understand it. What do they it. want? Jesus Christ to come down from heaven himself, which he kind of has, and he's on your show tonight. I mean, you haven't really talked about the look. Yeah. With so your listeners. What? You you do have the long hair, beard. You you have sort of a blonde SoCal. You have bro Jesus going. <laughs> yes. Well, I say that I'm like if Jesus had a baby with Tom Petty and was and they didn't love him. That's what I look like. <laughs> because medium Lebowski's too easy. You know what I yeah. mean? No one really gets my Chris Christopherson references. I I think I truly look like Dwight Yoakam, which is definitely not a compliment. You, it's definitely got a it's definitely got a Tom Petty thing. Tom Petty. Yeah. Well, again, the like. I once was called in a movie review uh, an acerbic Steve Buscemi, and I was like, oh, great. Like, uh, that's the ugliest actor yeah. in the history <laughs> yeah. of the world. And then I'm like, oh, great, Tom Petty, the ugliest musician in the history of the world. And these are the comparisons I get. I'm Look, I'm not a 10, but I mean, come on, folks. I'm at least an 8. <laughs> what? <laughs> But this is a look because honestly, like, are you are you preparing for something long for, for, for a like, while for the last year? Well, I love commitment to a bit, so I haven't cut my hair and it's driving my wife crazy. So I love that, like, it's really driving her nuts. So that makes me really. Happy. You're one of the few people that do not manage a baseball team and wear a goatee. <laughs> That's true. Um, you do not have your own. <laughs> you do not have your own mechanic shop. You are not the manager of a minor league baseball team. Yet, yet. you're going with a goatee. Um, I don't have a goatee, dude. Yeah, it goes. To, it's goatee to neck beard. Yeah, like I just don't have like a true. I I can't grow like a Greek man's beard. You know what I mean? Right. I have like a low Civil War general beard. <laughs> uh, but I just did this gig where they trimmed it, so it was a little bushier. Um, Bob, if you want to see something bushy? <laughs> oh my God, Kieran, hide your eyes. Uh, all right, so have you um, been cast in any projects but, since so this I, look? I did like I looked like you know my version of every man, but I, I had a mustache forever. Thank you. My son just came over and spanked me. I had uh, a mustache forever. That was my thing, and then everybody had mustaches. Right, and I, not to take away from your mustache, I love your mustache. Um, that like I I just was like I need to be unique. Like yeah. I know I'm all I'm very unique, so I can't look like everyone else. So no one in town. Is going Tom Petty is with a goatee. going Tom Petty, Jesus' <laughs> unborn baby that they never loved. Like, no one is doing that. So it's a very unique look. And, like, when I walk into casting offices, now it's just like. I love either, when I go into casting offices with the mustache. Like, are you willing to shave the mustache? I'm like, yeah, that's why. I'm like, I'm here to work, you know? Like, when you go in, are they going, are you just r- willing to just get rid of all, all of this? So what they say is, are you willing to shave? Are you willing to cut your hair? And my patented response every time is, groom me, pamper me, whatever you guys are into. That's what I say. Kills. Uh, yeah, it's pretty good. Um, so, God, I'm such a great dad. It's crazy. 
Just prepare. What is this kid really? eating? Bowtie pasta. Bowtie pasta with butter and mozzarella. And broccoli. And then broccoli. And broccoli on the side. You're not and mixing he, it into the pasta because you're not a donkey. <laughs> he eats fish, chicken, everything that comes out of the sea, which I think is like, as a parent, if you're a parent out there and you've got a, you know, five to ten year old, they're not eating seafood. Right. You're, you're just not doing it. But he's like he's but he's grown up in Dondo. I know, dude. His he's, dad his dad's medium Lebowski. Exactly, bro. So he loves things that come out of the he sea. He goes to you you guys will go eat sushi together, right? He loves sushi, it's his yeah. favorite. Yeah. But I'll tell you what he won't eat. Hot dog and hamburger. That's it's good. Crazy. I know. It's crazy though. You take him to the ball game, no hot dog. No hot dog. Can't be bothered. We went to the Dodgers game on my birthday. Hey Kieran, come eat, man. Come eat and be on this podcast. We need you, bro. We went to the Dodgers game and like, did, he didn't eat. I ate a hot dog. I drank a beer. He didn't right. even drink a beer, for God's sake. What's wrong with this kid? Me, um, me and Kieran, off the beer, off the carbs. But I feel like this kid will have a cheeseburger one day. Kieran, are you not a cheeseburger fan? What about the wine? Oh, yeah, he loves wine. He yeah? loves a Chardonnay. <laughs> he just, he's a white wine guy? <laughs> he loves a chilled shard. <laughs> All right, back here. You may have to blow on it, but so it's hot. European of him. Yeah, I I feel like eventually he'll eat a cheeseburger. He'll eat bacon, um, but if he doesn't, it's probably better for him. He'll eat a T-bone steak. I don't know though. We'll see what happens. I'll keep my eyes on this kid. Tastes change. I remember I was a kid. I didn't eat tomatoes. Refused. Yeah, he doesn't eat apples. He you would definitely eat a shark. A hundred percent. You would eat, eat a shark. shark? He did ask me the other day if humans were edible, and I said yes. Which uh, is 100% true. I would, I would imagine humans are delicious. Yes. Like the fat ones, especially. Yeah, I mean, we're... I mean, it's the same thing as eating any uh, fatty animal. Right. Or animals, right? You get, you, I was in Australia, a kangaroo, a camel, Re- right? When were you in Australia, with Eddie? No. Uh, he's, I think he's only famous, and that's borderline <laughs> famous, in Australia, right? Yeah. As, or so I hear. I think he just claims he's famous in Australia because none of us are ever going. <laughs> <laughs> no one can confirm nor he deny just, it. He just goes on a three-month vacation every year to Australia. Right. I swear I'm famous in Australia. Doesn't it's Bell's like I'm Palsy big in Japan. sound like a city in Australia? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I'm from Bell's Palsy, mate. <laughs> it's it's uh, north of Perth. Droopy down there. It's <laughs> drooping off the side. <laughs> That's another town in Australia. Yeah. Droopy down there. <laughs> I'm from Droopy down there, which is a suburb of Bell's Palsy. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, you're, I, and I've only found this recently in working yeah. with you yeah. on, on things. You're a pretty musical guy. Were you a musical, uh, were you musically talented as a child? Well, you know, I'm glad you brought this up, Joe. Uh, the first time I was ever paying. My show is about having artists on to which you, I, you're pretty much the most talented artist uh, in every facet that I've ever hang, hung out with. Well, you know. And, and I say that only to piss off my girlfriend who insists. She's like, I'm talented. I'm like, you're not Chris Wilde talented and stop trying to compete with him. Apparently, it's more taboo. He's my, he's my soulmate. Look, Get you out can of my piss life. off your girlfriend. <laughs> it's way more taboo to piss on your girlfriend, yeah. let's be honest. Okay, so actors back in the day had to be triple threats. Triple threats are acting, singing, dancing. Okay, So I started in show business. The first foray I had into show business, I went to the only boarding choir school I remember you telling me this. in this North is America. Allentown, Pennsylvania? No. That this was a the different first project. time I got paid to act was in Allentown, Pennsylvania. The first time I got paid to perform was singing in this, honest to goodness, world-class choir uh, that performed at this church on Fifth Avenue, St. Thomas Episcopal Church on Fifth Avenue, diagonally across the street from Trump Tower. We're Baron. That's my son, Baron. My, my son, Baron, lives at Trump Tower. Okay? He's one of the best kids. Okay? He doesn't come from Bell's Palsy, Australia. All right? He doesn't have up syndrome, okay? It's opposite <laughs> that. Uh, so anyway, uh, Fifth Avenue. I just told this story today. I'll tell it again. One time we were walking from the boarding school to the church to sing. We're all wearing gray, matching gray slacks, black dress shoes, matching navy blue blazers, uh, matching um, gray trench coats, uh, holding folders that you don't know what's in the folders. It was our music sheets. Cool black dude walks up to me on Avenue of the Americas and says, what are you guys, the FBI in training? And I go, oh, no, so we're the uh, St. Thomas Choir. We perform uh, at the St. Thomas Church. We sing at the St. Thomas Church on Fifth Avenue. He's like, all right, good luck, guys. 
the teacher <laughs> goes, do you know who that was? And I go, no. And he goes, that was O.J. Simpson. This is the mid wow. to late 80s. And I yelled after him, watch out for white chick's juice. <laughs> but he didn't listen. Uh, that part was embellished. But so I saw celebrities all the time uh, in New York City, like Dennis Quaid and Meg Ryan were a couple. They came to hear the boys sing. Yep. Uh, every Wednesday afternoon, there was this hot old lady with um, sunglasses in the church. I'm like, sunglasses in the church? The cojones on this broad. Uh, it was Jackie O would s- come to hear the boys sing. One day, we come down to the bottom of the choir room um, on the, in the basement of the church, and outside our, direct, our choir director and organist's office is this giant white woman with all white, head to toe, big, frizzy, blonde hair, giant lips. I, I, you can't take your eyes off her. We go down. Jerry Han- Dr. Jerry Hancock talks to her, comes down. He always gives the boys a rating, zero to 100, never gave us 100 ever. We were lucky to get it in the low 90s <laughs> ever. He's like, boys, you got 100 today. We freak out like we won the Super Bowl. He's like, I don't know if you uh, know, saw that woman who was uh, in my office just now, but her name is Carly Simon. No, no idea. No one knows who that is. And then he starts playing her songs, and we know her songs. And right. he goes, well, this woman just, she got commissioned to write a song, and she had writer's block. And she said, I came in her to hear the boys sing, to become inspired. She said she, was, she thought of a song on the spot. She asked us if we could sing on it, and we did. So two weeks later, we get the sheet music. A week after that, we go to the Hit Factory, record a song called Let the River Run. It wins the Golden Globe, Grammy, and Oscar for Best Song in a Motion Picture. Clean sweep. Only like two or three songs ever have won all three. That was my first gig. You're on the song. Gig You're on the show song. Business. I'm Do you get an Oscar it. for that? I, I, I mean, I, you know... <laughs> Obviously, it I don't seems want like. a Grammy or a Golden Globe, yeah. but I would like to write an angry tweet to get my Oscar. Yeah. Uh, but I should get an Oscar. I'm halfway to an EGOT. Right? Yeah, yeah, Grammy yeah. and Oscar. Um, so uh, I, maybe, I don't know. I didn't write it, but I performed on it. I was one of the Have you won performers. any performing awards? Uh, sure. Uh, best Actor at Northern Highlands Regional High School. <laughs> uh, best Actor at the New York Horror Film Festival. What was that for? Uh, the Revenant. Uh, starring I David I forgot Anders. your gift. Oh, oh man, no, that's okay. I want to see each other. Again. Yeah. Have you I, ever seen The Revenant? I have not. You would love it the most. Yes, it's I a know. great movie. Where can I watch it? Uh, you can you can rent it or buy it on yeah. iTunes or whatever. So that I, I my brother went to the same school and I'd watch him like sing Christmas carols on Good Morning America and be on TV. I was like, oh, I want to be on TV. Um, so that's why I went to the school. He went there. I followed. Um, so yeah, man, I I have a musical background i can sing and then my first time getting paid to act was in musicals i played dodger in oliver the artful dodger in oliver and i played uh wolf in the musical hair which i actually framed my old poster for and i feel like it's so apropos right yeah. now because this is the long this is the longest my hair has ever been and i starred in a production of hair for over six months <laughs> But it was so you, so f- have, you have the poster on the wall here in your living room what is yeah. your what's your most favorite piece of paraphernalia that you've stolen from a project you worked on well like the six or not foot stolen, or tall joking. standy of me as the DiGiorno delivery guy is pretty good sharp one. although like I was in this movie called All's Fair and Love you can watch it on Amazon Prime if you're a Chris Wilde fan and you have Amazon Prime immediately stop everything you're doing we're gonna make that the fifth on the intro and watch All's Fair and Love on Amazon Prime it's a horrible movie just <laughs> fast forward to the first time you see me <laughs> And watch it from that point on, and it's actually a good. I think it would be a okay movie if you fast forward to my part. I'm about 14 minutes in, let's say 12, and just watch it from that part on. Um, how are we doing on time? What time is it? It's six now. No, 5:53. All right, we got to. We're coming. We're coming back for part two. We are back for part two, and we are now. What, what park are we at, Chris? It's time for. Here in baseball. <laughs> uh, we're here at beautiful Alta Vista. Oh, I'm being told it's pronounced Alta Vista. The fields of Alta Vista, and it truly is a vista. It's an oasis here in the South Bay. Kieran's got his first batting practice. This season is kid pitch. Your your son is in the batting cage next to us. Yes. Uh, they cannot hear the balls being struck because he has yet to strike a ball. No. But, uh, I'm but sure the pitches are coming in yeah. high. Yeah, a little, little high on the pitches. Yeah, right. you know. Well, you're a professional baseball coach, I am. Joe. So I tell was. me what I'm, he's doing I'm, right and tell me what he's doing wrong. The, the son? Your yeah. son or the coach? Because the coach could really, he should lower down, maybe throw off a knee. Right, um, right, right, right. That's helpful. 
Because you remember how dominant Randy Johnson was? Dude, I saw him once at Sammy's camera on Fairfax, and I was like, there, there it is. There we go. Uh, I saw him, and I'm like, I go into Sammy's camera to buy some camera equipment or something, and literally, I'm like, who is this recognizable giant monster? Yeah. Who is this Hollywood horror creature? Yeah. <laughs> who is this terrifying giant monster that I want to scream when I look at? Oh my gosh, it's Randy Johnson. Well, he was so dominant because he was six foot ten. Yeah. And it's very difficult to hit a ball that's coming from good hit, Kieran, a- above you. Yeah. Uh, especially so he's six foot ten, ten you know, ten inch mound right. raised up. So he's what seven foot eight. And he's and the, and the pitch is coming down to you, and I always tell youth coaches, I'm like, you. I realize that you're lobbing it, but right. it's still dropping out of the sky sure. because you're seven feet tall. And this, a, this a is the first out. season of yeah. kid pitch. It's coming in level. Yeah, we it's need coming to, in we, low. Yeah, we need it to come in low. Need it to come in level. Uh, but as I watch Kieran, uh, my advice is we gotta we gotta keep his back foot plan. He's it all sort of comes forward at once. We need to be rotating on that back. You got to squash the bug. Instead of what I was yeah. told. Uh, also, maybe watch it all the way to the bat. But other than that, looks like a good swing. Okay. Yeah. It's time for gear at baseball. Uh, this is the first season of Kid Pitch, as I mentioned. Uh, before we were using the blue flame, which was like a sling, and then there was this like tire thing that was nice. Right. Right. Like the uh, pitching machine. Yeah. Yeah. So we had like two seasons of that, and now we've got. Oh, oh that's, that that's was the well best struck. hit of the well day, struck. my friends. Nice line drive. Um, um, but yeah, so now kid it's pitch, kid pitch. First year of kid pitch, and he wants the kid. He wants to pitch. It's a six-inch raised uh, pitcher's mound, and then thirty-eight feet from the pitcher's yeah, mound could, to home plate. That sounds about right. Okay, thirty-eight I think, feet. I think little league's forty-five. Great. So he's yeah, little he's, little he's, league. He's young. So uh, thir- kid, by the way, feet. kid pitch first year for you as a dad. This is gonna be a disaster. Oh sure, it's just gonna be pass ball city. Just like a lot of people, just a lot of chasing of the baseball. And it's I'm, I'm imagining a lot of walks, a lot, a lot of, walks. of kids getting hit. Yeah, a lot, a lot of walks, <laughs> a lot of kids getting hit, a lot of a lot of just non-action. And, the, uh, and I mean walks and then, home yeah, after yeah, practice, yeah. and you get hit. A lot of you <laughs> don't get a hit. Yeah, <laughs> a lot of parents melting down because oh sure because the kid gets taken out. It's like well, he walked eleven dudes, and we had to we had to pull the plug at some point. So we've got five teams that we're playing against over ten weeks, yeah. and one of the teams is machine pitch because they're younger and they had no like they they needed to play us to like play somebody. So what our coach is wisely doing is when we're at bat. We're having one of our guys pitch to our team, so Smart. he gets used to the kid pitch. And each, you know, now you get to rotate in your pitchers and feel them out because it doesn't really matter because you're playing first graders who use the machine anyway. Right. So I think that's genius, and I'm very excited because that game. I don't think that's the first game, but some sweet moms here, P.S. Um, but I will definitely. I know Kieran will get some action in those in that like. Machine pitch, we pitch to ourselves. He'll definitely get at least an inning. And this is just like a sports mega facility. There's soccer going on. There's right. baseball going on. There's softball going on. Believe South I, Bay goes crazy for baseball. Yeah. We had Nomar at our like opening day. I think he lives in the neighborhood, and he's a dad. Don't swing out here, pal, because of the kids, somebody can run into you. Okay? Uh, I don't want you to hit Joe. You know Nomar. Precious Joe. Nomar named Nomar. Nomar. Because... His father, Ramon, they just reversed it. <laughs> oh, get out yeah. of here. So, uh, so the next I'm time naming I see my, him. I'm naming my son after you, but I'm just Surik. 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 Dude, yeah. the next time I see him, I'm going to call him Reverse Ramon. Hey, yeah. backwards Ramon. <laughs> hey, Reverse Ramon. Uh, so, this is, so this is just like batting price today. So your kid will get a couple more hacks, and then I, I'm and then guessing they that they're just going to rotate it, right? It's from six to seven. They're gonna yeah. clearly run out of it. Oh, they brought in a lefty. This is one of my favorite moms. Her name is Robbie. She kind of looks like Christy Brinkley. <laughs> Don't swing that bat around the other kids, though. Okay. This is Sierra and Brody and Robbie. Brody's on the squad. He was on the Pirates with Kieran on the spring baseball. All kinds of baseball talent. They don't have a place. name. We should that's why I'm here. To name. Here, Scout. What the team name? Yeah, there's they don't no have name. a team name. Well, they have a uniform. They didn't get the uniform yet, and I think it's just going to say the name of the league, Redondo Sunset, uh-huh. on the uniform. So and we don't know what color we are. That's important. I pitched a couple of really bad ideas yeah. that Kieran actually liked, the slugs and the bricks. 
I like the, I like the bricks. <laughs> right? Yeah. The bricks. Why, why not go with the killer whales, though? Why not just well, make this whole year no, round? No way. I'm not, the, I'm, not, I'm not in charge. <laughs> All right, right. Is a ba- is a you, basketball institution of the they South can't, Bay. They can't uh, stomp on your good name if no, you're not. No, no, no. It's a, it's a, now, you it's didn't a, want to coach baseball. I got to be honest. I used to... I used to coach basketball and assistant coach baseball. Yeah. And then when they bumped me up to commissioner. Of the basketball league. Yeah. yeah. My division, not the right. league, just Sorry. the division. Division. I, I, I imagine the league is out there. They're right. going to pull their heads out of their collectives and make me the commissioner of the entire league, I'm guessing. And it'll probably be very profitable for yeah. the league and myself, I'm uh, guessing. I, I think the, they're hoping that you take it worldwide. Yes. You know? But once I, More international once players. I became commissioner, I was like, I'm all in basketball. Right. And I'm just going to be a dad for baseball. Smart. And also, like, to coach every single sport is yeah. excessive. Now, you we'll were, saying, you were saying as we walked up, your wife uh, shot down soccer early. Did the kid she, said, she put her foot down and said, no soccer. Did the kid ever play soccer? Never. 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 No he, soccer. And he calls it, he calls it football. Okay. <laughs> he calls it but he's not going to play football. Football. Either. And he calls, he calls American football murder ball. <laughs> I pitched America ball, but he said, Dad, let's be honest. Those guys are killing each other out there. <laughs> They're all brain dead by 30. Let's call it what it is, murder ball. And I said, you got it, son. Will he be playing murder ball ever? He will not play murder ball. He'll not play proper football. Um, but next fall, I'm going to give him the option. And actually, I'm glad you're here on your own show. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Thanks for having me. He plays basketball in the winter. He doesn't get a vote, but he wants to play. Right. He plays baseball in the spring. That's what you do. Right. Next fall, I'm going to say it's your choice to play A, baseball, B, soccer, which I know he's not going to choose. He's never even heard that word before. Right. He calls it football. And then I'm going to give him a choice of at least five sports. What should I? What should those sports be? Like well, you, I mean, golf. I mean, I don't golf. Know. Yeah, not not bad for a South Bay kid. Right. Swimming. He's like Swimming he's would be great. the swim team, but that's a summer thing, right? What is it, Kieran? Wait, what's our coach's name? That is Coach Randy, and we were talking about Randy. Johnson before. Kieran, Kieran, listen to Coach when, Joe. When in doubt, just say Coach. Yeah. The life lesson. That, so keep great. that one in your back pocket forever. And not in just sports. <laughs> yeah. Hey, Coach, how much for this regular unleaded? Yeah. <laughs> just when in doubt, <laughs> It coach. says on the sign. Hey, sure it does, Coach. Brody, do you want to be on the Joe Prano show? Hi. It's great. Bro- killing it. I know. These kids, uh, they're, they're America's greatest resource. All right, so golf. Yeah. Baseball, soccer. I mean, swimming isn't a sport. Well, but you know what? Make, I think maybe give him like a He's, personal he takes sport. swimming lessons. Yeah, but a good, I mean, you're doing team sports, but give him a personal one. Maybe oh, ex- like a jiu Maybe, maybe he, he excels at something. Right, maybe right, right. He's, well, that's what golf. Yeah. So that's tennis. singular. Tennis. 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 That was a great hit. Tai uh, Chi just crushed but you know what I it. You know what I always regretted uh, as an athlete? Like, what? why didn't I just pick something so niche and dumb? Why didn't, like, why didn't I just Curling. start playing racquetball at, like, five? Like, how it's good your parents' is, fault. Yeah. How good is anybody at racquetball? I always tell Kieran that um, LeBron James did not touch a basketball until he was age nine. Is I, that I true? I read that once, and I just say it like it's gospel. <laughs> but I think that's true. So you're, he's already ahead of the game. Yeah, dude. He's that's like what I that's what eight. I told him before we started. Uh, he already has twenty YouTube subscribers. Exactly. I told him in, when I was seven, YouTube was f- fifteen years from being invented. So I would he's tell well the, the fans of your show to look him up on YouTube and watch his videos. But I just I th- no, that's a slippery slope. S- seems like the bad idea, right? Yeah. Seems like a real bad idea. Robbie is very interesting. Her husband is uh, a world class stuntman. Has done probably. Five times as many movies as I've done. Wow. Yeah. That's amazing. Yeah. This we're here. We're scouting. <laughs> we're here scouting. Youth baseball show. But also, Covering Coach Joe baseball. comes and helps with my killer whale basketball regime the program. How many practices are you going to come in for this season? Uh, I think the last couple of years I only did, what, one. one each year? One so far. They're pretty young. Yeah. Seems like it would be worth having me in the preseason for one. You like, will, Okay, so last. Early season. What's up, Karen? Wait, can I be? Pi- am I gonna be pitcher like? Here? Joe and you and I are all gonna work on pitching as soon as batting practice is over. Get okay? your swings in. Get your hacks in. Get your hacks in. As but a don't pitch- swing the bat near any people. As a pitcher, eventually they will cut you off from being allowed to swing ever. They will refuse to let My you hold the bat. Thing is when 
the pitcher gets a hit or gets on base. Yeah. And even in the dog days of summer, somebody runs out and puts a jacket on him. Yeah. <laughs> that is amazing. Even in a day game. Keep that arm warm. That is insane to me. It, you could be in Cincinnati, Ohio in 100 degree heat in the dog days of August where it's just curtains of mosquitoes everywhere. And they put a jacket on the pitcher. And what's first. funny is half the time they're not wearing a jacket when they're on the bench waiting. Kieran, do not your swing s- that bat. Your son is, I, is drop fake that bat. swinging the bat at people. Thank you. Um, yeah, and sometimes they won't even be wearing the jacket in the dugout. But yet when they get on the base, it's like we have to make a whole show. We have to have a show it's amazing. about them having the jacket. Brody's got a very powerful swing. When he connects, he he wa- he. He's the home of the Whopper. We call him Burger King. He's the home <laughs> of the Whopper. Um, Kieran hit two home runs last year. Well, let's be honest. They were inside the park. Uh, right. A lot Little of league throwing homers. errors. Uh, yeah. Um, but two. Um, until, he, until you get to the 90-foot bases, Kieran if you hit the, the ball bat. and you score, it's a homer. Drop the bat. He had the highest on-base percentage of the team, maybe even the league. M- most important statistic, if you ask me. Get on the base. It's it's, it's the number potential one thing runner. you have to do. Yeah, you know, point. run scored a little uh, a little misleading. You could get on, then the guy after you, he grounds into a double play. Not your fault you didn't score. No, His it isn't. stupid fault you didn't yeah, score. But you got get on base. Get on base. Letting somebody else, man. If you get on base and there's a guy in front of you, likely you drove him in. RBI, great. You know, nice stat, but. You can't always control it. Now, legally, I don't know if I'm allowed to mention this name around this many kids, but how's Andy Ruther these days? Yeah, I don't think you can mention him. (laughs) (laughs) How is Stroke Voldemort? He's uh, on this show. I can say his name. Yeah. What's it? It's Andrew, right? It's It's Andrew. Andrew, Bogdanovich uh, Ruther. Thames, I believe. Thames. Thames Ruther. Andrew Andrew T. Ruther. Thames. Yeah, I don't know. The River Thames, like the Thames River. But but he's from a stupid. Midwestern family, they didn't know. With a lot of Thames. boys, right? They they say Thames. They don't know that they're completely mispronouncing it. But he is Andrew Thames Ruther. Oh, God, that almost hit my head. It's Here, Kieran, ball. put your glove on, bro. Put your glove on. Chris, we were talking about your musical background before. One of my favorite questions to ask of all my guests, especially when I have a musical guest on, if you were stuck on a desert island for a year, right, and you could bring... As much music as you wanted. The entire catalog of one artist. One artist. Who do you bring? Easy. California Raisins. They're, all, they're early <laughs> stuff. So good. Uh, no, my favorite. I, I, right now. I always wonder, what is Chris Wilde listening to in the car? Are you a, I am. Uh, you, you. We were just listening to baseball. I, right now, I am listening to the Beach Boys. Heavy rotation. Because everyone knows the Beach Boys, but they only know about. Right. 10, 12 songs. Totally. So I have, like, unlocked all the albums. I have unlocked all the songs. And there's some later stuff. And I don't mean, like, later, like, Kokomo. I mean 70s stuff. So pre-Kokomo. Yeah, pre-Kokomo, post-Good Vibrations. That is absolutely excellent. Okay, this has to stop. (laughs) This has got to stop. No, absolutely not. Go over there. It's too close to the people. No, 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 no. I would, first of all, throw closer to each other. And throw, I know, but don't be that far from one another. I care about, I, I care like, about this community I like, too I like, much. I like that Kieran's going with the Ben Roethlisberger glove on the throwing hand. <laughs> Big Ben. <laughs> Batting glove on the throwing hand. Big I ben like dodged it. dodged the Me Too bullet, yeah. oh. didn't he? It's like, did, all, all those athletes. It's funny because. Me? It's funny because that's the thing that's happening now is like people are going back into the tweets and right. going back and, and calling people out. Like nine years ago, you tweeted, you know, she, and now you're not allowed to use gender pronouns and you're fired. Right. But they don't go back 10 years and go, uh, you were you accused were of rape <laughs> two people. <laughs> like facts. Yeah, but my Brody, Twitter. get closer to Kieran. But my Twitter's clean, so I'm good, right? <laughs> like Kobe Bryant's out there doing commercials still. I know. And he like fully. Did yeah, that. yeah. That, there was no margin of error. It was um, all like, but there was back then. Back then, everything was settled out of court. It was just a big old payday. Yeah, and it went away. And not I, anymore. And I always talk about being a Knicks fan is like we can we never have the timing right. You know, Isaiah Thomas, massive sexual harassment scandal, and they're like, whatever, we paid her off and it's fine, and he gets to stay the GM for a while. And I'm like, uh, why couldn't he be? Why couldn't the Me Too have happened then? Take that other. We got a proper off. GM back in the day. 
You still are going with the Knickerbockers. Uh, you have to. Well, those are your guys. I, you know, somebody stole my thunder. I had talked about it, and then somebody m- must have been a listener of the Dirty Sports podcast. Somebody went. Someone on stole eBay. your thunder. <laughs> the city of Seattle would love yeah. that. Somebody went on eBay joke. and sold their Knicks fandom. <laughs> they 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 set the they set the bid at nineteen hundred and seventy three dollars the last year we won a world championship and somebody gave him like five grand and now he's a Laker fan no yeah that's a great gag great but, gag you should not do that by the way no. great catch Kieran um, yeah, you should not do that because I can't talk to a Laker fan yeah can't. no I would never be a Laker fan but but, I, but maybe that's part of the bid right okay if you Portland Trailblazers though C J McCollum Lehigh alum now the you know, I used to call myself the most famous Lehigh journalism grad uh, with my 12,000 Twitter followers. Boom, 12K. S- uh, CJ McCollum has passed me. He is a an NBA superstar. He's oh, an NBA yeah. star. You hate to see this, but uh, here we are on the baseball field, and Brody Irigoyen just, the ball ricocheted off his glove and hit him right in his face. And now he's all tears. He's in his mother's knowing bosom. And can he shake it off? Can he walk it off? He should have caught the ball. That's I'm not sure done. that this is an all stunt. <laughs> to get attention? I don't know. Just dad's a stunt man. Maybe he's practicing his, <laughs> his trade, you know? <laughs> what a great callback. <laughs> an amazing callback. His dad was like, ah, oh, like, I fell Pirates down the stairs. Movies. His dad and I did a movie together before we knew each other called Evolution. I don't know. With David Duchovny? Yeah. With, I called him Dukov, and he loved that nickname. He loved it. Wow. Julia Moore was in that movie. You were, well, Who were you in that movie? I was college student number two. Great. <laughs> um, but it was me What's and John Cho yeah. as a college student. Uh-huh. He's, uh, he's now, Harold yeah. and Kumar. Uh, and now he's a super rich Asian. Yeah, dude. I I, he wasn't in the, the big movie, but he was in Star Trek as right. Sulu. Um, There's a couple other like randos that were just, just college students in that movie. Um, what is the biggest box office success? That for, you've been in for Chris Wilde, yeah, Ninja Turtles. Oh yeah, the uh, the bigger the movie, bigger the than Space Cowboys. The role, <laughs> yeah. So that that role is very small, <laughs> and then Space Cowboys got like I don't know, ninety something million at the box office, domestic box office, uh, over a hundred worldwide. Um, that was the the role's a little bigger, right? You know, the Duff had forty million. My, the role's a little bigger, right? The Revenant lost huge money, huge role, huge role. <laughs> I made about I don't know, a couple hundred bucks. Yeah, that had a really the Revenant had a really good run, and it'll probably be this month or this coming month, October for Halloween, on Sci Fi Network. We we were on Cinemax for years. We were on HBO. We started on Cinemax and HBO are in bed together, right? So they're the same parent company, or whatever. Um, Cinemax showed us first for two years, and then we moved over to HBO like Zone. But then we did so well at Cinemax and HBO Zone. We were actually on proper HBO, like Saturday nights, like The Revenant. It was right. great. And now During the Halloween been, season. Yeah. Or honestly, that was yeah. just like a, it was a long run. It was like Before years. it's time, The Revenant. I haven't seen it, but uh, I mean, come on. So good. Like in in terms of just the, I Literally know what the it's about. Literally the title. Yeah. Just the title yeah, exactly. alone was Before <laughs> It's Time. The Revenant out, <laughs> won an Oscar 15 years later. He was. He was already in the cage. How sweet is that hat, bro? That is pretty sweet. I yeah. was reading. I was like, Rad Dondo. Yeah, Rad Dondo. Um, so throw it nice to him, man. <laughs> oh, he's just going to throw it at the fence, which is going to hurt someone. Yeah. <laughs> it's just. Oh, oh, up and over. It's ju- uh, I think he got a pull oh, and came oh, back, though. You. Yeah, don't just play catch. You guys got to practice throwing it into the glove. Kieran, take your batting glove off when you're throwing. Nah, he's going with the big bat. You know what? And it's working. He's going so with the big bat. He's going. He's judge. going with. He's going with late season Eli Manning. Uh, <laughs> Kieran's mother wisely showed up on the field because she knew these two jokers. We're not paying attention. We're not paying attention. <laughs> she is all kinds of irritated. No, we have. He was in. He's in, he was in the batters batting cage. He's going to get another couple whacks. I think he got two rounds already. Yeah, and then then we're going to take him over to the pitcher area and work on pitching with the Coach bull, Joe. The bullpen. So this, I mean, clearly this is the most, uh, this episode is the most uh, out of the box, let's yeah. just say. No, I love it. I, I like, we're, we're out here, we're amongst, we're amongst the kids. What was your best baseball memory? In my life? Yeah. Let's see. And let's say, like, 
let's say your best baseball memory, but there, and then, but then no, there can be like factions of pro baseball memory, per, a personal baseball memory of right. performance of you, the player. I mean, what's uh, your best baseball? Probably memory? my best baseball memory is uh, right before I moved to California in 2010. I was. I call myself the assistant head coach of the team because I was, for all intents and purposes, I was the head coach, but there was a figurehead in place. Sure. Uh, that was sort of the, the kid wrangler. I made all the baseball decisions at the collegiate school in New York, and we won the, uh, it was the, the I, we, I guess it was the state championship, but for our, like, level, you know? Well, it's not like we went into a tournament against all these teams in the state, but for our whatever it was, you know, uh, not just our league, but, like, I forget. It was the Nices, I believe, and uh, just an amazing, amazing group of guys and a good send off. I was actually supposed to leave and drive across country to Los Angeles like twelve days before, right? Um, but we made the playoffs. Like, I think we squeaked in, and then we won a playoff game. Amazing. Then we won another playoff. Game. And you're in charge of the batting yeah. order. Yeah, you're in Everything. charge of the lineup. I'm coaching you're third in base. Of uh, our, our, our first game. What? Our first game in the playoffs, we faced a pitcher who ended up like being like really really good, and I think he went on to play somewhere. I forget exactly where. Uh, we won. We won one Was nothing. <laughs> Was it the Mets? Uh, I, one I think, of the New I mean, York baseball he, teams. He played. No, he played. In, he played like high level college. Great. Right. I don't know if he. I'm, I'm sure he got drafted, but I'm not sure where. But. Uh, we, our leadoff hitter hits a triple to start the game. Amazing. And then uh, gets on third base, and he goes, am I going? <laughs> and I was like, and he was a smart. He was our best player. Right. And I was like, yeah, you got to go on anything. I mean, we might that might be the only hit we get off this kid. So if, if he grounds it back, I go anywhere but a ground ball to the pitcher. You got to go. Okay. You got to score. So contact, ground ball to third base. He goes, hard ground ball to the third baseman playing at the back. Like, he's out. He's dead. He's out. But he goes, he gets a good jump. He goes, it's going to be close because he's fast and he's good and he got a good jump and throws just a little bit high and he slides in under. And safe. Then, yeah, safe. And then we. I didn't talk for a while because my jaw yeah. was hanging open, guys. And then we just, the whole game, like, I think we got another guy to second base and he got picked off. And uh, that was it. We won one nothing. No. Yeah. Off uh, the first hit. Off the, off the triple and a ground ball to third. And, just, and then you held him scoreless for the yeah, rest of the game. And our pitcher pitched. Fantastic. Game of his life. Game two of the playoffs. We're down to our last out. Mm -hmm. And we're down like six. It's not happening. Come back. Like six, seven run rally with two outs. No. In the last inning. Uh, we win. We get to face uh, Polly Prep in the championship. John Franco is their pitching coach. John Franco's oh, kid who's drafted is on their team. They they had they had won like 80-something games against teams in our league. Uh, we, we, we smoked them in, no. the, in the championship game. Yeah. Just, just to cr and from then beginning you moved to Hollywood. Yeah, and then I moved to California. And then that's next the day, story and of the champion. <laughs> that, Joe night, that night I went. Fiber uh, jazz hot dogs. My uh, my team said to me, they go, uh, come to this bar. I believe it was called the Parlor, but these I might are, be confusing that. These are young guys. These are teen. These are high school kids. They go come, come to, to this bar, bar okay. in New York City. I was like, I you you're not allowed to go to bar. And they're like, the guy lets us drink in the basement of this bar. <laughs> And I walk in, and my whole team and all these kids from the school are down there playing beer pong in the basement of a New York City bar. They're all 17. Championship beer yeah. pong. And I drank with my players, and my girlfriend at the time was like, what are you doing? You're not allowed to drink with 17-year-olds. I was like, Broke I'm, moving her on the spot. I'm moving to California tomorrow. Goodbye forever. Yeah. Uh, you have she, a sister. She was actually already in California. She's like, what are you doing? You're going to get in trouble. I was like, I'm mo I'm getting in a car tomorrow right. and driving 3,000 miles away. Like, come get me. Part three. The only person, really, who should be on a three-part podcast with me. Now, it'll be all one podcast, right? Yeah. Okay. But we will. I'll keep it in parts because then everybody will get the real feel of it. We're leaving this Redondo Little League, this this whatever park it is. We'll slice of heaven. I mean, we, we, just, we, just co baby. we just coached up Kieran a little bit. Yep, the boy. Um, I want 10% of his first contract. Done. Big league contract. I I think we might have made you some scratch from some of the mom stakes watching your coaching. Yeah, can't wait. Uh, you might be the personal baseball tutor. Can't wait to come down here. You remember when I taught the kid about tennis rackets and wiffle balls? Oh, we'll have, so we'll have a pop we, we fly bonanza. Yeah. At the airport. Field. I'm down to come down here all the time. Coach him up. Next thing I know, I'm the king of Dondo baseball. <laughs> you are reverse I, Ramon. Yeah, exactly. You're Eaj Prano. All I got to do, keep this mustache, sure. wear a hat. Try not to kill I have some, the kids. I have some stirrup socks. Next thing you know, people are like, how much? Um, 
Well, we're headed. We're headed to a bar. That's right. We're gonna. So we're gonna wrap this part three up. You've convinced me. I said I was off the booze till November, but just being around you makes me want to just <laughs> imbibe. I'm an enabler. I'm a great time enabler. You know what's great during great times? Drinking. But. My, Dude, I could have a club soda, Sam yeah. Malone style. Well, the, you know the thing is, is like I mean, I'm, I'm not, not I'm not, uh, I'm not off the booze for because I'm an alcoholic or you're anything. You're trying to, you're trying to get leaner. Just trying to get leaner. So don't so drink beer. No beer. And then like even when I do a couple cocktails, it's just like one or two here and there. It's a little tequila and grapefruit. Smart, wicked smart. It's basically like a, a kombucha. Yeah, dude. <laughs> right? I mean, a vodka soda, a vodka. On the rocks. How often do you get to go out and like tie one on these days? Are you are you ever drunk? Oh, this guy pointing yeah. itself. Oh, this guy he he gets hammered, buddy. He gets yeah. after it in the garage or just like out on the town. Well, really, you're gonna stop, right? Okay. <laughs> um, I'll tell you something. Uh, being a dad, you find the other dads, you find the moms that party, you find the ones that drink. So, look, I'm not gonna go up to Hollywood and get wasted, right? You know. Um, but I will definitely find my kindred spirits out there and we'll imbibe in some shared spirits out there. Uh, but yeah, dude, like my problem, uh, is that like, I'll have a drink with the old lady. We'll go out, whatever we'll have, you know, we'll have a couple of drinks with the, f- with the friends and then like, we'll, you know, we'll, we'll come home, whatever it, my, what I need to do is then shut it down or like right. have a little puff and go to bed. My problem is I'm like, well, I've already opened the door. I've already started. <laughs> I might as well drink a half a bottle of Glenlivet and then just get, sh- and then pass out on the couch. So that, like, I don't do that often, but I do that certainly too many times. Do you um, remember, like, a a real Hollywood party? Like, you, have you ever been, I mean, you've been in the business a long time. What's sure. your best, just out on the town, Hollywood Hills, a little too much to drink? You got any good... Celeb, drunken celeb stories, drunken yeah, celeb I mean, run-ins. I, I partied with Blake Griffin, DeAndre Jordan, and Jim Jeffries, um, and I was blackout. <laughs> Jim Jeffries, blackout. Called me the next morning to apologize. I was like, you don't have to apologize to me. You may have to apologize to the agent you burned with your cigarette on his chest <laughs> because you thought he had too many buttons opened on his shirt. Um, DeAndre Jordan and I, I, DeAndre Jordan can't get blackout drunk. Right. He got black drunk. Right. But he can't get blackout drunk. Like Griffin got half black drunk. <laughs> uh, Kendall Jenner was there. And I said, hey, listen, Kendall Jackson, I just want you to know I'm, I'm a big fan of your wines. And I just... <laughs> Prayed that she would laugh and that yeah. Blake would laugh. DeAndre laughed first, and then everybody laughed. Jim Jeffries was too blackout drunk, probably didn't get the reference. Also, didn't want to laugh because he didn't make the joke. Right. Uh, but so <laughs> that was a pretty great celeb night. I um, I got so wasted that I literally was sitting up at the club, talking, and the friend I was with was like, "And then you fell asleep. You sat up." And in, like literally in the middle of a conversation, fell asleep, and then you were asleep, and then and people laughed, and then laughed and left. So that was kind of the the swan song of the night. Apparently, I was too drunk to get in the Uber, so I had to go sleep at my friend's house. The Uber driver wow. was like, "No, I'm not driving this guy to the South Bay." I think maybe the Uber driver just didn't want to drive to the South right, Bay, to be right. quite honest. Um, how about drunks on set? You ever you ever show up to a scene and your co-stars had something on his breath? Well, if you watch the Saul's Fair and Love movie, um, which we recommended, and it's on Amazon Prime, I am drunk during the scene where I am uh, kissing Jeanette. Okay, so it's in her trailer. It was our last night of shooting. Um, We all, everyone on that set was drunk that night because it was our last night, and we were in, like, Flint, Michigan before the water turned. Right. (laughs) So it was, like, the height of the economic downturn, before the auto industry rebounded, um, and every I mean, it was a dark, dark place, so we needed to just kind of let loose the demons. So we were all drunk on that particular night, but that scene, I am definitely drunk. Um, I'm trying to think of, like, who was, like, wasted on a set that I was working with. Uh, you know, I, I'm pretty sure David Anders and I partied during The Revenant, but nothing too crazy. There were a lot of long night shoots. Night shoots, people do weird shit. Right. And also, for the most part, actors are pretty good 
about pulling the wool over your eyes when they're like on blow or you know they've had a couple. Right. You know what I mean. Well, we're here in the. Was this the Avenue A bar parking lot? That's right. Um, so let's Avenue go, A bar. I'm gonna go and have grill. a. Let's go have a tequila and grapefruit juice for you. Yeah. People for cannot coach. see you on Twitter. They cannot find. Are you not even on Instagram? No. They can go to YouTube. You go to YouTube. And if you want to talk to me, uh, comment on my YouTube videos. So and please like all my dad holes videos. Uh, we're trying to get the band back together to do another dad holes video. Um, but I, I am I am very uh, I will reply on YouTube. So you, and all you need is like a Google account or whatever. And then where comment. and then what's the next project people can see you? Uh, Rim of the World coming to Netflix soon. Um, and then I play the comic book store guy on Young Sheldon. So please watch every episode of Young Sheldon. My first episode was season one, episode 18. But they promised they'd be bringing me back multiple times throughout the run of the series. I mean, the kids obviously grows up to be a full on comic book. Geek. Right. So you'd think they'd go back to the comic book store. And you'd <laughs> think the long hair at the comic book store would be there. The owner, Glenn. Uh, so please watch Young Sheldon. If you want to watch my episode tonight, it's called uh, A Mother, A Son, and a Blue Man's Backside, uh, season one, episode 18. But I will be back for more in season two. So watch Young Sheldon on CBS Thursday nights. And then um, everyone should drive and buy as many Kias as possible. But that Kia commercial. Is gonna be great. It's gonna be everywhere. It's it's, be it's not out yet. It's not out. It's literally. It'll be out like tomorrow. I'm putting it out there today. This is gonna be what this whole episode was about. Uh, the Chris Wilde Kia drinking game. Wherever you are, whatever you're doing, when you see the Chris Wilde commercial, drink. Have a drink. I love it. And also, always drive Korean. They make the best cars. They have the best pussy. Korea. Hey Joe, I like Joe Show. I tell everybody that's my shit. See, I had a long ride, turned the volume up high, and the time flew by so quick. I laughed out loud, that's what it's about. I really don't feel safe no more. And Joe stands out, even in a big crowd, because he drinks till he hits the flow. Hey, Joe, it's time to stop the show. Pack it up and away we go.